In this video, we'll show you how to create, organize, and move you and your players between pages easily. Go to the top right center of your screen and click the blue page icon. This is the Players ribbon. It's the big red ribbon that's on a single page in your toolbar. This ribbon shows which page your players are currently viewing. Remember, you as the GM can float between any page you want. Your players don't have this option. They remain on whatever page the ribbon is on. Once you're ready to move a player to a new page, simply click and drag the ribbon to the page you want them on. Once you drop the ribbon on a page, all your players will immediately see the new page. It's really just that simple. Maybe your players made the very smart decision to split the party. Don't worry, you don't have to move all the players from one page to the next. You can move individual players. To move a single player to a different page, simply click and drag their player banner or avatar at the bottom of the screen to the page you want them to be on. As you drag their name, you'll see a little avatar of them appear and will also show up on the page you put them on. You can do this for multiple players if you need to. Just keep in mind that the players that you move can only see one page at a time. And as the GM, you'll have to bounce back and forth to these pages. If the party reconvenes together, you can easily click and drag the player's avatar from that page back to the ribbon. This will group them all back together again. Okay, for this example, you just finished a map and you want to start a new page with a different map background. First, we need to create a new page. Go to the top right center of your screen and click the blue page icon. Now, to make a new page, simply click on the Create New Page Square in the top left. Great! This adds a blank, untitled page to our toolbar. You can rename your page by clicking the name below it and typing in the new name. Having your page's name really helps in keeping track of what's on each page. Let's name this one Forest. Hit Enter. From here, you can click on the image of the page and it will load in the center of the screen. Now, if you want some tips and tricks on building maps, check out the video in the description below. But for now, we're just going to go through the page settings. Hover over the thumbnail that represents our page and click on the bottom icon that shows up, the little gear wheel. This will open up your page settings. Up at the top, we have our page details. First, we have the size of the page. Say you uploaded a map and got it aligned to the grid, but there's some extra squares on the side of the map, or maybe the map doesn't quite fit. You can change the height or the width of the page here to get rid of or add more squares. Now let's say you want to change the background color. You can do that easily by selecting a color below. This is great if you find the default white to be a little too bright, or if you want it to blend in with your map and objects better. Next, we have the scale. Let's say your page is a huge world map, and you want each square to represent more than the default 5 feet. Maybe each square on your map is 100 miles. You can change the distance and the unit of measurement here. After scale, we have the grid section. If you're using this page for a background or maybe inspiration image and don't want the grid at all, you can turn it off right here with the grid toggle. Now, some tabletop role-playing games like Starfinder use hex maps for certain battles. So you can change that grid from squares to hexes in this dropdown. Next, if you're using a game system that measures diagonals differently than Dungeons & Dragons, you can choose one from the next dropdown. Now, the grid can also be made smaller or larger by changing the cell width. This is nice if you want your tokens to take up more or less of your map. Now, the color box here is for the lines of the grid. You can make them whatever color works best for your map and game aesthetic. If you are in a dark space, changing the lines to white will make the grid much easier to see. You can also change the opacity of the lines. This will make it easier to see the artwork underneath. Now, if you have a Roll20 Plus or Pro account, you'll see a toggle for movement. When turned on, this will restrict movement through your dynamic lighting barriers. So, if you've added dynamic lighting to the walls on your map and turn this on, players will not be able to move their tokens through those walls with dynamic lighting on. This is great for making sure your players don't accidentally place themselves in a room that they do not belong in. For more information on adding dynamic lighting to your maps, check out the links in the description below. Next is Fog of War. Having this toggle on will limit what your players can see, but it will also disable updated dynamic lighting. For more information on Fog of War, check out the link in the description below. The last option here is for audio play on load. If you have a song or score or sound effect in your Roll20 jukebox, and you want it to play whenever you move your players to this page, go ahead and set that up here. This is great for setting the mood of your maps. 
Okay, at the very bottom of your settings page is the archive page button. As you create more pages throughout your game, your page toolbar might start getting a little cluttered. Archiving is a great way to keep just the pages you are using or might use in the near future available while putting the old ones away. Now, archiving does not delete your page. It just puts it in an archive folder, out of sight. So if you want to archive a page, click on this button and it will go into the archive folder at the bottom of the page toolbar. Now, at any point, if you need an archive page back, click on the archive folder at the bottom of the page toolbar. This will bring up a list of pages you've archived. Now, it will just show the name. So again, make sure you name your pages. Once you find the page you want back, click the restore button. And voila, it's now back. If you made a map and want to make a copy of it, you can easily do that by hovering over the page and clicking on the top copy icon. A few choices will pop up. You can duplicate a page, but not just the page. The map, the lighting, the objects, the tokens, and any GM info you may have added to that page. If you don't want a page, of course, you can always hit the trash can and delete it. Great, you can now use pages to keep your maps and locales seamlessly organized and move your players in between them.